Hello and welcome. This is your chemistry teacher, Mr. Juma. So we proceed with metals. Now we look at extraction of zinc in our lesson number five. As I said, so this will be the general information you need to know about zinc. So first we we'll start with the chief O. So the chief O from which zinc is extracted. We have two. One is zinc blend, which is in sulfide, and two calamine, which is in carbonate. The impurities in this uh, oz, silica, and galena, which is the sulfide. The other O of zinc is zinc oxide. So the extraction process. So here there are four main steps. So now uh, omitting the initial stages of uh, mining, removing uh, the earthy materials, which is part of concentration. So uh, first flotation, so we take it from there. So the zinc ore, which is uh, either zinc blend or calamine, will be concentrated by froth flotation. Then step two will be roasting of the ore. So calamine, when it is heated, that is a carbonate, zinc carbonate, it decomposes to form zinc oxide and carbon four oxide. While zinc blend, when it is heated, now zinc blend, because of uh, the impurities, there will be two reactions taking place. So zinc sulfide will be oxidized to zinc oxide and sulfur oxide, while lead sulfide will be oxidized to lead oxide and sulfur oxide gas. So this will be the reaction taking place at the roasting stage. And then the third and second last step will be the reduction process of zinc oxide to zinc metal. Now the reduction can be done in two ways. First is by reduction of carbon using carbon and carbon oxide. So reduction of zinc oxide using either carbon and carbon oxide or the other uh, also option that can be used is to use electrolysis which we are going to discuss. So first let's see how zinc oxide can be reduced to the zinc metal using carbon and carbon four oxide. So you need a blast furnace which uh, has this shape with a modified, so a modified blast furnace uh, incorporated with the condenser. Now, the materials, so here you will have zinc oxide plus coke, plus limestone. They are added from the top. Now the entrance is made in this way such that when the materials are poured in, this will move to this side and also this will to move to this side. So allowing the materials to flow in, but once the materials uh, flow in, it goes back, closes to prevent the vapor from escaping. So the materials will flow down here, and there are a number of reactions that will take place. So in this blast furnace, these are the reactions that are going to take place. First, coke is going to react with the oxygen. We have hot blasts of air, and that is why this is called the blast furnace because air is blasted in, hot air is blasted in. The essence of blasting in hot air is for it to react with carbon so that the carbon can react with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide form is immediately converted to carbon dioxide by the unreacted carbon or coke, which is reduced to carbon dioxide. Now, carbon two oxide again here is the main reducing agent, as uh, we explained in the previous lesson, lesson four, which is.
which is because being gaseous, it will occupy larger surface area over the zinc oxide or the metal that uh, the metal oxide that we are using. So here we have two equations for that one. So carbon two oxide reduces zinc oxide to zinc metal. Now zinc having uh, a boiling point of about uh, 913. So the temperatures around here they are about the temperature here in fact it is maintained at a thousand degrees Celsius. While this one has a boiling point. Zinc has a boiling point of 913 degrees Celsius. So meaning these temperatures are way above the boiling point of zinc. So the zinc that is formed is vaporized. It changes to vapor and moves to the upper part of uh, the blast furnace together with the gases. Now remember the air, constituents of air. Air, the largest percentage is nitrogen. We have oxygen and then uh, noble gases, carbon four oxide. So among the gases that are going to live having not reacted here, so the gases here will include nitrogen. And then as you can see, a lot of carbon four oxide is produced in most of this reaction. Some of the unutilized and reacted carbon four oxide. And if uh, in the reduction process here, uh, oxidation process, if some zinc, um, that is a lead sulfide was not uh, oxidized, to be oxidized here, so you might have also some traces of sulfur 4 oxide here. But the major components of the gases they are going to be carbon oxide and nitrogen because of the blast, the hot blast of air. You can also have their traces of the local gases there among the gases that are living there. And then, um, so zinc oxide is reduced to zinc, as I've said. So, because zinc having a boiling point. Uh, lower than the temperature maintained in the lower part of the blast furnace. It vaporizes, it changes to vapor and moves to the upper part with the unreacted gases. Also, some of it that has not been reduced by carbon 2 oxide will be reduced. Any zinc that will be in contact with the coke or carbon, it will also be reduced to zinc metal, which again also will vaporize for the same reason having a melting point of uh, a boiling point of 913 yet the temperature here is a thousand degrees Celsius so it vaporizes it changes to vapor and then it moves to this upper part of the furnace so here it is sprayed with lead uh, spray to condense it to liquid so that it is not oxidized by some of these gases that have not reacted, so that uh, it, is, uh, it is not oxidized to zinc oxide again. Remember, we are just converting it from zinc oxide, so it should not be oxidized back to zinc oxide. So it is um, sprayed or treated with lead spray, which cools it rapidly, and then it condenses. So we have the condensers here, then uh, once it is condensed into the liquid, it flows into what we call the separator. Now in the separator, zinc will occupy the upper part because it is less denser than lead, so lead will be at the bottom, like that. So the indication of the lead lamp it will mean lead is almost coming out. So uh, that means lead will have to be laid out uh, to be drained first. So zinc is turned off at that particular point. And then there are other reactions also that take place inside the blast furnace. So we added limestone. What was the point of adding limestone? Now, limestone here, limestone serves two purposes. One is that when it decomposes, it forms two products, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So one of the purposes is that 
It increases the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood furnace. And as you can see, carbon dioxide is converted to carbon dioxide, which then acts as the reducing agent. Point number two, calcium oxide from removes silica impurities. Remember you have said there are also impurities of silica. So the silica impurities are removed by the basic calcium oxide, as we explained in the previous lesson, that calcium oxide is basic, but silicon-4 oxide is acidic. So the reaction is possible, acid and a basic reaction. So forming calcium silicate, this is what we are referring to as slag here. So, and then the impurities, <coughs> They are for lead sulfide. So lead sulfide, remember here it is oxidized to lead oxide. So lead oxide is also reduced. So apart from here zinc, so we can also have the other reduction process of lead oxide. Lead oxide will also be reduced in a similar manner by carbon four or by carbon two oxide and carbon, just like zinc, to form lead metal, which is the one that is floating at the bottom here. So here we have, this is slag at the top, and then this is molten lead at the bottom there. So that is how lead is removed from uh, zinc as well as the silica impurities. So this is how the impurities are removed. Silica impurities are slag, then galena with sulfide is removed as molten lead. So generally, this is how uh, lead uh, zinc oxide is reduced by carbon and carbon two oxide. Now the other way in which zinc is reduced is by electrolysis. So let's see how to reduce zinc oxide to zinc metal by electrolysis process. The second way of reducing zinc oxide to zinc metal is by electrolysis. So during, uh, to carry out the electrolysis, first we need a solution which will be the electrolyte. So first, zinc oxide is reacted with dilute sulfuric acid to form zinc sulfate solution. So this solution is what is now going to be used as the electrolyte. So the equation for the reaction, zinc oxide reacts with the use of sulfuric acid forming zinc sulfate solution in water. Any lead, remember the uh, impurities in um, zinc blend was galena which is zinc sulfide which you have seen to be oxidized as well to zinc oxide. So any impurities of zinc oxide, I mean of lead oxide, will be reduced or will be removed to lead sulfate from solubility rules. We know that all sulfates are soluble except lead sulfate, uh, calcium sulfate, which is uh, slightly soluble, and barium sulfate. So lead sulfate is an insoluble sulfate. So it will be precipitated. So the remaining solution will be only having zinc. It will be zinc sulfate solution. Now, the next step now will be to electrolyze the solution, the electrolyte. And in this case, the electrodes that are used are not inert. In the tropic electrochemistry, when you are looking at factors that affect preferential discharge, of ions, one of them was the nature of the electrons. Electrons. So in this case, the nature of the electrons used determine which ions to be discharged. And in this case, by using the aluminium sheets as the anode and the cathode using the lead rod, which contain one percent silver, this one will favor. This one favors discharge of zinc ions because at the anode you are going to have the hydroxide ions and the sulfate ions 
then we say that the sulfate are not easily discharged because they require a lot of energy for their discharge. So the hydroxide are discharged at the anode. So this is the equation for the reaction at the anode where water <coughs> and oxygen are liberated for electron flows. While at the cathode, we have zinc ions from zinc sulfate solution and hydrogen ions from water. So here, if we use inert electrons, then hydrogen will be discharged. But by the choice of the electrode used here using lead, it will enable the zinc or allow the zinc ions to be discharged instead of the hydrogen ions. So this time, less energy is required to discharge zinc ions than to discharge the hydrogen ions. Therefore, the reaction at the cathode will be zinc ions will gain. Now, mark this. Four electrons are lost at the anode. Those four electrons must be gained at the cathode. That is why you can see in under normal circumstances, the simple mole ratio will have been one is to two is to one. But in this case, you see having two, four, two, of which two could have simplified. But we leave it like that because of this balancing for the sake of balancing the electrons. Electrons lost at one of the electrodes must be gained at the other electron. So the electrons lost, four electrons are lost at the anode. Those four electrons must be gained at the cathode. So with the point I just explained that if graphite or inert electrons were used, hydrogen gas will have been evolved. That means Hydrogen ions will have been discharged. Remember, we had the three factors, the position of the ions in the electrochemical series, the concentration, and the nature of the electron. So by basing on the position of the ions in the electrochemical series, zinc is above hydrogen in the reactivity series or the electrochemical series. In this case, hydrogen ions will have been favored because they are lower in the electrochemical series. But because of the nature of the electrodes used, then zinc ions are preferentially discharged. So let me just summarize this, all this in a flowchart summary to wind up for us the extraction of zinc. Just before I leave some correction here, the formula of calcium silicate, mark this, so I made a mistake here. So calcium silicate solid, there's three here. That three had been omitted, so there should be Three there. So let's look at the summary flowchart. This is the summary of extraction of zinc using a flowchart. So step one, we have the mining process. Step two, purification by frost flotation. Then step three, roasting in air for zinc oxide, of which you know at this point also the oxide is formed where the case we are using um, a zinc blend so you have zinc oxide as well as lead oxide that's why the now reduction in the blast furnace so this one will be the blast so you are going to get zinc vapor at the top and then liquefied, then lead at the bottom together with slag, gases given off at this point, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Here the gases we have sulfur dioxide, when you heat zinc blend, then when you, zinc, uh, you heat zinc calamine, you will have so the composition of the gas will depend on the ore that you heated. Then you can also have, because you are heating in air, the other components of air, you will also have gases like uh, nitrogen, which is abundant. Then the traces of normal gases, carbon dioxide as well. Then from here now, we say there are two options. So this is where we hit. Uh, in our discussion we have just had, this was option, F, uh, option A, then this was option B. So option A was reduction using carbon and coke 
and uh, carbon two oxide. So this is what you are referring to as coke carbon. Here is the coke. Then carbon two oxide, the glass furnace, of which you have now. Those are the products from the glass furnace. The other option B was the electrolytic method, whereby first dissolve zinc oxide in the sulfuric acid to form zinc sulfate solution. Then step two, electrolysis of zinc sulfate solution. And in this case, during setting up of the electrolytic cell, we use aluminium sheets as the anode and lead as the cathode. So at the anode, you will have oxygen gas produced that the carbon lead is going to be deposited. So this sums up the extraction of zinc. That will mark the end of our lesson 5. So in lesson 6, we will discuss extraction of lead. Thank you and God bless you.